Hi, church. Um, John 20, verse 31 says, But these are written that you may believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, and then believing you may have life in his name. That's John's conclusion of his, of his gospel. When he's writing, he's showing us Jesus as the Son of God. And he tells us that he's showing us the signs and the miracles so that we can believe that Jesus is who he says he is. We've been looking at the, we're looking at the signs of the Messiah, the seven miracles that are in the book of John, that John points to as, as Jesus being the Son of God. Today we're going to look at the second miracle, uh, which is the healing of the nobleman's son. Now we don't know who this nobleman is, by the way. He's, he, we don't even know if he's a Jew. It doesn't give us that, that, those kind of details about him. But we're going to see that he's a man of faith. So let's go to our Bibles. Let's find John chapter 4. And we're going to go down to verse 46. This, uh, this takes place right after the, 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 his encounter with the woman in, of Samaria, the Samaritan woman at the well. And he's, he just leaves Samaria. He travels 40 miles north. And he comes to, arrives at the city of Cana of Galilee. And he's confronted. It says, verse 46, Now Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water um, wine. And there a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. Now, just the setting here is that this man finds Jesus here. You're going to see that in a second, verse, the next verse. And his son is home, back home, uh, about 16 and a half miles away. Capernaum is the top of the Sea of Galilee. Um, um, and uh, Cana is about, I don't know, 15 to 16 miles out toward, toward the west. Um, verse um, 47, it says, When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his sons, for he was at the point of death. So this man's in a desperate position. He's in a desperate spot in his life. He needs a miracle. And he's heard Jesus is in town, so he, he heads over to Jesus. And, and after his, his, you know, the word is starting to spread about Jesus, he just came off a successful mission in, in Jerusalem. He's did a great job in, with the Samaritans. And, and now he's back in his hometown. And no doubt the word of, of the, the water and the wine incident has, has, has gotten out. And so this man comes to Jesus for, a, for another miracle. And look at Jesus' response. He says, Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Um, Jesus is not just speaking to the man here. He's speaking to the entire crowd. Because he's starting to gather a following of people who are looking for the miracles. Wanting to see something special happen out of Jesus. And so he, he kind of rebukes the crowd. At the same time, he's calling for, for faith before miracles. He wants us to believe in him because of what he says, not because of what he does. He wants to see us respond to him in faith. Faith comes before miracles. And that's kind of the message he's getting out here. It says, But the nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Now here you see just a little tweak of, of, of a failure in this man's belief. He he believes Jesus can heal his son, except he, need, he needs Jesus to go to his son. He's looking for him to be present with his, with his son when, to, in order to perform this miracle. But Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. Now here's, here's the cool part. So the man believed, and he went his way. That's faith in action. That's, that's the man stepping out in faith. He's... And Jesus just rebukes the crowd for needing to see a miracle in order to believe. Jesus tells him, immediately after he tells him, My son's dying, come and help. He says, go, he's going to be okay. And the man turned in belief and began to go home. He, he believed Jesus has, had the power to heal him. And it says, And now as he was going down, his servant met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. And he inquired of them the hour that he got better. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. And so the father knew that it was the same hour at which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed in his whole household. And again, look at this. This again is the second sign that Jesus did when he had come out of Judea, of Galilee. This is the second sign, John said. The second thing that shows him to be the Son of God. He has power over time and space. That's the call. That's what he's showing us. Jesus doesn't have to be there to, to make the miracle happen. He didn't have to come 
uh, there. You know, it, what that tells us is that God is always near. God is always going to be close to us. There's times when we feel isolated and separated and, 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 and out of the mix and away from God, but He's always near. There's no time, there's no distance that, that can separate us from the love of God. And He's calling us to believe that, to trust that, to know that He's a part of us and He wants to be a part of us no matter where we are. He's, he's near. His power is always available. He calls us to believe Him first. Then the miracles come. That's what that's what this man did. When he, as soon as Jesus says the word "go," he left, believing that Jesus is going to do what he did. And his confirmation came the next day. He's done, and it happened the same time that Jesus said to him, "Go." The nobleman had a tremendous step of faith. He stepped out as soon as he heard the word of God. Church, what is our step of faith? What is God calling us to believe and, and, and to look for? What's your step of faith? Is God calling you to, to something bigger and more beyond? Maybe he's calling you to share your faith with, with a loved one or a stranger or somebody at work, a co-worker. What's your step of faith? Do you believe that God can use you? Do you believe he can do something amazing with you? See, miracles are going to happen when we step out in faith, believing that Christ is going to do what God has called us to do. This man steps out in faith. John shows him as the Son of God because he has power over time and space. We step out in faith believing God can do anything, anytime, anywhere. Amen? What an amazing, amazing picture. Our God, we saw last time, he was the God over creation. Now he's the God over time and space. What is he to you? And what is he calling you to do as far as stepping out in faith? Let's pray. Father, thanks again for today. Thanks again for a new opportunity and new opportunities to bring our way. I pray for this church, this mighty family of God that we're blessed with, Lord. Bless each one as they go through their day. Bless each one as they, they struggle through these trials that we're facing these days. But God, we trust you and we know that you're an amazing God. So be glorified in our lives. And Lord, call us to bigger and greater things. Call us, Cause us to step out in faith and let us just bring glory to you by obeying. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, church. God bless you. We got step number three, miracle number three, which is the he healing of the of the guy at the pool of Bethsaida or the pool of, of yeah, pool of Bethsaida. So I look forward to showing you the third miracle of, of Jesus that shows him to be the Son of God. God bless you. Have a great day. And uh, go out there and show somebody our God is amazing. Amen. All right.